these days that we are starting a new month, September. It seems that this year is coming down to his uh, ending and people are start to prepare for what's gonna do the next year. Plans are start to uh, be pro proposed and probably changes are now going to be adjusted because of the first half of this year have already his evaluation in many areas. And I'm sure that you already are uh, preparing for the next year. What are your plans for the next year? What are your, your, your concerns about the rest of this year? What you have done so far this year, uh, 2016, and how you are grateful for God's blessing as he helped you so far here in this year. Yes, the faithful God, the God of Ebenezer, who helped us until today, is here with us. And is here to uh, continue, learn, uh, teaches us to become more, more like Jesus, more like his son. Because now we are children of God and we are here to reflect the glory of our Father in heaven. Today I come with uh, this title, Stream Righteousness, to encourage you to be aware of what we are as Christians in this world, our identity, our attitude, our values, our understanding of what we should be in this world in order to fulfill our life, our destiny. God created us not just to enjoy these temporary blessings that we have in this world, but he created us to be part of a great plan, a mission that he has for all of us. And it's important as these days many people are going away of Christianity, it's crucial for Christians to become disciples of Christ. And it's crucial for Christians to, to show the characters of the kingdom of heaven, the virtues of the kingdom of heaven, and be as useful and as influenced as the soul of the air and the light of the world. Now, in order to understand what is the message I have for you today, I want to talk or teach you, or well, not to teach you, but probably you already know, about one kind of word that is already these days in news, in media, uh, exposed for this contemporary society. And I'm talking about this word called it political correctness. Political correctness. I don't know if you have heard about this word, political correctness. So the definition is the avoidance often considered as taken to streams of form of expression of, or action that are perceived to exclude, marginalize, or insult groups or people who are socially disadvantaged or discriminates against. So political correctness. These days, many people are trying to pursue political correctness. They are, try, they are trying to define what it means political correctness. How can we use political correctness? And, and why we need political correctness? Especially these days that we are in campaigns, in elections in many countries uh, and as media all the time teaches us in the news, especially in America. And all the news that comes from the election campaigns is about political correctness. How can the candidates present a correct political view, a correct political uh, perspective? And how they, def they define what is correct in their political ways, in their political views. And for young students that we have here, just know many. This is also important for you to learn from now on. Because if you are preparing for college, if you are preparing for university, you're going to be immersed in this definition, 
political correctness. Because right now, in the world, political correctness is, according to the news, on campus. It's talking on campus. And it's dominating the, 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 the college atmosphere. Professors are talking about political correctness. Teachers are talking about political correctness right now in the schools. Not only in high schools, middle school, elementary school, but also in kindergartens. Political correctness, they say. And how they show political correctness, they say, we have to change the curriculums. We have to change the materials of teaching. We have to change the, 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 the doctrines, the teachings of the schools. Because we have, we, we have and we need to be political correct, they say. That's the excuse. That's the argument. And they try to sound political correct to one another. As they redefine concepts, teachings, materials, curriculums, and way of life. And even the infrastructure of the schools. One simple ex example is the problem that many schools have right now, especially in America. Hopefully, this won't come to Korea. I mean, you know, I, I, I hear in the news, the moment already started. That in order to be political correct, the schools need to have bathrooms, not for men or boys and girls, but for those who think that if I feel that I'm a girl, I can go to this toilet or another. I can go to this restroom or another. If I feel I feel like I'm a man, then I should go to I I, I have the right to go to this toilet or another. But if my biological design doesn't show that I'm a girl and I want to go to a girl toilet, it's not political correct that you put a toilet with the level there that say only girls. Because by those who understand that what girl is, a gender, they consider that I'm not a girl or I shouldn't go to that toilet. Now, the government in America, they have a headache to create a third by bathroom in the schools for those who are no biological girl or boys. But that's also offended for those who feel that, okay, if I go to another bathroom, I will be noticed and discriminated, isolated for no, have a full expression of my sexual interpretation or sexual inclination. So the schools are, uh, they hear the, the, the students complain about that, then say, okay, then what we should do? Changing the, the, the names of the toilets or the, the genders of the toilets is not the solution. What we have to do? We have to change the concepts of genders. And now they are already finding that they shouldn't call people men or women but they should call it something else. So, from kindergarten, elementary, middle, high school, now the education departments, they have the, the mission to teach to innocent students what is the real definition of gender, what is the real life that have male, females, and transgenders, because that's politically correct. What is politically correct, they say it in the campus also, is that you should not tell about absolutes. You should not talk that there is absolutely truth and absolutely false. Because in this war, everything is relative. The laws are relatives. The teachings are relatives. And as the war continues rotating in his age, change will, the laws will be changed, and the teachings will be changed, and people will be changed, and philosophy will be changed, 
and we have to redefine over and over everything that we learned from the past. Why? Because that's political correct. And they say, yes, it's political correct that you can go to some place and do some kind of actions because in your understanding that is good for you or that is what you believe and what you do. But if what you do offend to another, then that's not correct. And people, they say, okay, it's correct these days to say that Muslim, Islamic states are not as bad as, 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 as media try to show. Or as Christians, they say, Christians try to show. Is it okay that you can offend or, or criticize a, a Christian, but it's not okay to criticize or offend a Muslim? That's not political correct, they say. So they use this word political correct as a double edged sword. They can cut it in one way for the benefit of their intention, or they can cut it in another way for the benefit of their other intention. But all this is relative. There is no really a right or left in this approach of co political correct. So the students are confused. And then what is true? What is the truth? What is right? What is wrong? Because if this is okay in one way and this is not okay in another way, then what we should do? Students are confused. What they do at the end? They just give up and follow the mass. They just follow the majority. Because that is, for the majority, politically correct. Without discerning, Without critical thinking, what is right and wrong? And especially for teenagers, be careful. Develop a critical thinking. Because when you go out of your school, to the college, to the universities, to the world, you will find a savage, salvage generation. That they will try to pray you with your belief because you are not ready to defend what you believe. And because they think that it's political correct to shout your mouth. To wash your brains. And to tell you what they think is more important than what you believe. Yes, by definition, commonly abbreviate political correct as PC. Yes, it's called a PC. And it's a term that in modern uses is used to describe language policies or measures that are intended not to offend or disadvantage any particular group or, or people in society, in the media. The term is generally used as a pejorative, implying that these policies are social, manipulated, culturally controlled, or excessive. But there's also a kind of a theory. It's called the conspiracy theory. And it says that some right-wing commentators in the West argue that political correctness and multiculturalism are part of, the, of a conspiracy with the ultimate goal of undermining Judeo-Christian values. This theory, which holds that political correctness originates from the critical theory of the Frankfurt School as part of conspiracy that its proponents call cultural Marxists, is generally known as the Frankfurt School conspiracy theory by the academics. The theory origin originates with Michael Minisinot, in 1992, essays New Dark Age, Frankfurt School and Political Correctness, published in the Lyndon La Roche Moving Journal. And in 2001, conservative commentator Patrick Buchanan wrote in The Death of the West that political correctness is cultural Marxism, and that is trademarked is 
intolerance. That's what people say. There is a comparison. Con this conspiracy is a movement that is going around in the world to try to take over Christian culture, Christian values. For modern political correct movement, people say that it began in the University of Wisconsin Madison, which is one of the most liberal colleges in the United States. Political correctness is a liberal degrading of the freedom of speech. George Orwell's 1984 famous incorporated the notion of limiting truth through language, says words or actions that violate political correctness are called politically incorrect. Words or actions that violate political correctness are political incorrect. If the Bible said that God is the only, Jesus is the only way to God, that's not political correct. Then they will call it that you are political incorrect because there are many ways to go to heaven or nirvana or the highest status of spirituality. And everybody has the right to continue with their belief. Muslims, Hinduists, etc., etc., because that's political correct. So the Bible or Christians shouldn't say that there's only one way to God. That's no political correct. Then you are intolerant, they will say. You are radical, they will say. And you are political incorrect. There are false accusations also. In the United States, the forces of political correctness have been blaming for censorship with time sitting campaigns against violence on network televisions and contributing to a main street culture which has become cautious, sanitized, sacred of its own shadow. Because of the watchful eye of the PC policy, even though in John Wilson's view, protest and advertisers, boys called targeted TV shows, are generally organized by right-wing religious group campaigns against violence, sex, depictions of homosexuality on television. Different than in America and the United Kingdom, some newspaper reported that nursery schools have altered the nursery rhyme Ba 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 black sheep to ba 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 rainbow sheep. So there's no black sheep anymore, but now it's rainbow sheep. If you say that there's only black and white, you are politically incorrect. And they have banned the original song. But it was the later reporting that, in fact, the parents of children together, P A C T, nurses have the children's turn the song into an action rhyme. They sing happy, sad, bouncy, hopping, pink, pook, blue, black, and white shipped, etc. This story was widely circulated and later extended to, this, to suggest that other language bands apply to the term black coffee and black bar. Private I managed reported that similar stories have been published in the British press since the sun first ran then in 1986. So it's already there. It has been a while. It was spread. Now it's famous. And for those who have never heard about this term, political correctness, be ready. Because you're going to hear more about that. At the American University, liberals began imposing political correctness to prevent recognition of difference amongst gender, religion, belief systems, sexual orientation, and nationality. In the 1960s, feminists began to demand that the neutral pronouns he, him, and his be replaced with the expression like he or she, him or her, term, them, etc. Even though the last one is 
actually grammatically incorrect, they argue that no one will be able to understand that the masculine gender, including the fem feminine gender, is neutral context. But this was just part of the campaign to redefine the social roles traditionally associated with masculinity and femininity. <clears throat> In science also, political correctness punished anyone who criticized the theory, the theory of evolution, the theory of relativity, or liberal dogma about global warming. So if you believe in creationists, you are political incorrect. Political correctness of PC also means that the alteration of one's choice of words in order to avoid either offending a group of people or reinforcing a stereotype considered to be disadvantaged to the group. More specifically, groups which or whose putative leaders or other activists claim some status as systematically oppressed or discriminated against will periodically attempt to change the term by which they are referred to and demand that society as a whole can change its usage of words as well. So this is not only a movement that political pol politicians, members of the government are trying to influence in the society, but also now is on campus. They are already in middle high schools and they make the students be active in show that they are pro or against one concept or another and they want to teach the students to be all the time political correct. Yes, some examples of the students in high school, they say, well, Muslims are not all terrorists. That's political correctness. If you say, I can actually see you, I don't know what does it mean, they say this political correct. My hair is real, right? <laughs> I will marry whoever I want. That's political correct. I am not a caller. I will not cut your grass. <laughs> I don't know what is, what is all about political correct in this statement, but we are not all Mexicans. Well, could be excuse for those who are in, our, in North America. Like here, when you go to another country, you are not Chinese. Korean people are not Chinese in, in America. <laughs> Not all Asians are studious, have squinty eyes, and speak the same language. I agree with that. <laughs> and I'm no white trash. And there's a, I, don't, I didn't put it here in the, in the screen, but there's a cartoon that, you know Snoopy, right? Have you ever seen Snoopy cartoons? There's some cartoon in Snoopy that there was a picture of a black boy and a white boy. Now the black boy say, I like black. Then the white boy say, you are political correct. And then the, bo the, white, the white boy say, I like white. Now the black boy say, you are racist. What is the difference? If you say you, are, you, are, you like black, that's political correct. If you say that you like white, that's racist. People are trying to create a culture these days. And the innocent students of these days, they don't know what is right and wrong. They don't know what is left and right. They don't know any directions at all. And especially here in Korea. I tell you, if you are a parent, if you are a teacher, if you have disciples, you have nephews, or whoever young friend in your life, please prepare them for, them for what they have to face in the future. Our 
Korean students, they don't know even how to go home. They even don't know their address. <laughs> they don't know where they live. They are so dependent from parents, they cannot think by themselves. They are mechanical racing in this country, but it's okay to protect our children. It's okay to try to have influence, but we need to train them to be independent and be ready to defend themselves. I say to my son, my first son, you can go to Taekwondo classes, but not to have a medal. You are taking these classes because one day you have to defend yourself. It's an Arsha Mar. But if you go to South America, you will, de you will need Taekwondo to defend yourself for thief and for someone who, can, who wants to harm your mother or your brother. Or even me when I get old. So I'm giving you the opportunity to go to Taekwondo because I want you be ready to defend yourself. Not to attack somebody, but to have self-control, to, 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 to have a the dominion of your strengths, but also to be ready to defend yourself. The same thing I say to my son. You will go to church to study the Bible, not to have knowledge of yourself, but to defend your faith. You need to be trained. And you have, as you go in the Taekwondo lessons, to go to the first white um, bell, white bell, then the yellow bell, then the brown bell, until you get the black bell. So the same thing is in discipleship. You right now probably have just the white bell uniform in discipleship. You are just watched by the blood of Jesus and you are all white. But you have to grow in knowledge. You have to grow in understanding and you have to attain a discipleship as soon as possible. To grow to the next level of spirituality. To defend your faith and to be aware of what's going on in the world. Because it's, it's not just easy to go outside and say, believe in Jesus Christ and you will go to heaven and everybody will say, Amen. People will come, like Jonas say all the time, with questions. And you have to be ready to answer those questions. Who, with sincere heart, wants to know the truth. Being politically correct does not make you correct. And this is not new, actually. Even though Wikimedia will say that this happened in the, in the last of the 20th century, I can tell you today by the scripture that this was happened even in the time of Jesus. Yes, that's brought us to the reading of the scripture of this morning. As we read again in Matthew 5.20, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, who were the Pharisees? We talked about this last week, that they were the traditionalists. They tried to put the tradition and they tried to put the law, in quotations, as an identification of their culture, as a, as a passport to show their nationality. But what Jesus is saying here, that these people, they try to be political correct all the time. They use the law to be political correct, but they never follow the law. They tried to change the law, even though they say that they were the defenders of the law, by adding the tradition. In order to be politically correct. Because you, don't, you cannot say, you should not lie, as the commandments of God says. But they say, well, sometimes you can lie. God will understand if you want to lie for the blessing of his people. And that's what they teach him. They teach to the young generation that the Bible says that honor your father and your mother, but you can not obey this law if you give your offerings to the temple. And they change the law that was correct. And that was the standards of Christian life and the standards of the people of God with the traditions that they invented in order to be political correct. And that's what Jesus was pointed to his disciples because this teaching is not for no Christians. This teaching is not for unbelievers. Jesus was teaching to his disciples, to Christian people, people who believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior, that if 
our righteousness do not surpass of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. But these people were the, the scribes. These people were the one, the most conservative people in, in their time of Jesus. How they can surpass this righteousness? How can surpass the, the, the spirituality of these people? Especially the Pharisees. This, they fast every day. They give so much money or offerings to the temple to show that they are, they are giving everything to God. They pray hours in, on, in public so everybody can see they are devoted. They are, their, 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 their piety is worthy to be praised. But Jesus, say, they try to show they are political correct or spiritual correct. But unfortunately, they were not spiritual correct. They were probably political correct, but not spiritual correct. The kingdom's principle, or the king of kings' principle, is righteousness. The chapter 5 of the book of Matthew teaches about the true righteousness. Jesus gives three explanations about true and spiritual righteousness. The true political correct is not what people say these days. It's not just creating or redefining the law. It's to keep the law. And keep as organic and as original was created. That's political correct. Political correct is not changing the law. It's not reinterpreting the law. It's not redefine the law, but it's to keep the law. Religious leaders have an artificial external righteousness based on law. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes. But the righteousness Jesus described is a true and vital righteousness that began internally in the heart. So it's not an external performance or religion's perspective that you will show to the world, but it's the internal state character of your heart that will show what real faith is, what real Christianity is for all of us today. The Pharisees were concerning about the many details of conduct but they, <clears throat> excuse me, they neglected the major matter of character. They were concerned about how to act, how, to, how to, to pray, how to do this, how to do that. But they forgot the most important thing it, that was the character of the heart. They just want to show up so they can be politically correct. But they didn't war on their own hearts to be more like God. More compassion, more self-control, more, more humble. The virtues of the kingdom is to speak the truth all the time, to be servanthood, to, to show the Beatitudes. And Jesus, that's why, after teaching the Beatitudes, he said to the disciples, if your righteousness did not surpass of the Pharisees, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. But pastor, we sh you didn't say that we enter the kingdom of heaven just by faith and by grace. Then how can we keep a righteousness over the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes? That's impossible. We are not perfect. And if that's condition for entering the kingdom of heaven, nobody will enter in the kingdom of heaven. Is not the Bible contradicting itself? Is not Jesus contradicting itself? You will ask this kind of question. But before I answer that question, let me show you that Wordsbury is saying in his commentary of Matthew about the true righteousness. Chapter 5 teaches about the true righteousness from the beginning to the end of the chapter. 
Verse 3 shows us the attitude toward ourselves. 4 and 6 teach us the attitude toward our sins. 7 and 9 teach us the attitude toward the Lord. 10 and 16 teach us the attitude toward the world, as the soul and the light of the world. And 17 to 90 teach us the attitude toward the law. Now, talking about the attitude toward the law, we say that we can seek to destroy the law. And that's actually what he said that Jesus did. Jesus came to destroy the law. And as he was accused that he brought the law by not keeping the Sabbath, by no, but no, uh, uh, worship in the way that, that the people, of the Pharisees in the time worship. And also the verse 17 shows that, that Jesus also seek to fulfill the law. At the same time that he, in some way, prayed the law. And verse 19 teaches that Jesus seek to do and to teach the law. And this is what we as Christians have to do as followers of Christ. Destroy the law, fulfill the law, do and teach the law. Now, how can we understand this? In the law of Moses, God certainly revealed his standards for a holy living. So we have the law to live a holy life. The Pharisees defend the law and so to obey it. But Jesus said that the true righteousness that please God must exceed of this Christ and Pharisees. And even the common people of his time. Jesus taught with authority and not from the authorities. So, if I agree with Worsby when they say that Jesus destroyed the law in the way that Jesus destroyed the law that was contaminated with tradition. The law that was distorted or redefined by the tradition. Jesus broke that law. And Jesus also broke the law to worship God in one way. That is just presenting a sacrifice every time, an annual ceremony. But this sacrifice was not enough for the rest of the life of the sinner. He brought that law, that tradition, that ceremony with his own life, presenting himself as a new sacrifice, perfect to God, that no one's ever after believing in his sacrifice, have to do another sacrifice again. Jesus taught with authority, but not from the authorities. We, as Christians, have to have authority in keeping God's law and defending God's law, but not to keep the laws that are redefining against God's will by the governments but the authority of this society. We are not here to be lawless, but to have a higher law, the law of God, that is perfect. The law that shows us how to love God and to love one another. The governments, they made laws that they just love themselves, but they don't love each other. Jesus taught with authority and he taught with his activity. Jesus seemed to defy the law and our Lord's association also seemed contrary to the law that he was eating with friends that are publicans or tax collectors and sinners. And that seems for the, the Jews to, to break the law. And he asked to his disciples, why your master are sitting and eating with publicans and tax collectors and sinners? They couldn't accept Jesus' activities. 
And yet, it was the Pharisees who were destroying the law. By the traditions, they robbed the people, the war of God, and by their hypocrisies in their life, they disobey the very law that they claim to protect. The religion was a dead ritual, not a living relationship with God. God wants for all of us to have a lively relationship with Him. We are not here to be religious people. My loving church, we are not religious people. I don't care we are just two or three here. We are here to learn to have a relationship with God. Not to be a Protestant, Evangelical, Presbyterian, Catholic, or whoever you think you are. We are not following our religion. I'm not teaching you religion. I'm teaching you to have a relationship with God, and I put as a pastor the first one who is in need of a relationship with God. Because even here in this world, no one is perfect. So, if this offends you, I'm sorry, because I have the concept that no pastor in this world is as holy as God. No person, pastor in this world is untouchable as a king in any monarchy. I'm against that. Sorry. It does offend you in your culture. And I first, I'm the first one to say, I'm a sinner and I commit a lot of mistakes in my life. But even though God still used me, he still filled me with his Holy Spirit, he still wants me to preach his word and for his glory. The glory is him because I all the time say, God, why you call me? Why you want me to be a pastor? If I qualify myself, if I evaluate myself, I would be in fire. I should go to hell. It's a hard thing to be a Christian. It's a hard thing to keep holiness. It would cost the whole of your energy, your whole of your, 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 your concentration to not commit a sin. I mean it, but that's impossible because we are in this world and we are under this body with a sinful nature. But yet we have to try it again and we have to try it again and do our best to love God with our actions with our, with, by keeping God's law. We are not having a death religion. We are having a living relationship with God. Jesus fulfilled the law in his teaching and he also fulfilled the law with his own sacrifice. His death and resurrection show that he kept the law. He fulfilled the law. And Jesus did not destroy the law by fighting against the law. He destroyed the law by fulfilling the law. So Jesus, he destroyed the law, yes. Not by fighting against the law, but by keeping the law and fulfilling, the, giving the emphasis that the law needs. Because if you read the, the rest of this chapter 5, which I just read verse 20 for this preaching, but... You will find here, from verse 21, about murdering. Jesus said, yes, the Bible said, or the commandment said, you should not kill. But Jesus said, even if you get angry, you kill a people. So he not just killed the law, but he fulfilled the law. He didn't fight against the law. He just added to the law the real meaning of the law, the real purpose of the law. He talked about adultery in verse 27, and he said, it says, do not commit adultery, but Jesus said, even if you look at the girl and you decide in your heart, you already commit adultery. He talked also about divorce. He talked about oaths. He talked about to take revenge, eye, eye for eye. And he even talked about love the enemies. So he didn't break the law. He fulfilled the law. And he do and teach the law the rest of the, rest of the Sermon of the Mountain. For the Pharisees, that was not acceptable. For the Pharisees, that was not politically correct. Jesus was politically incorrect. He changed the law. He put to the law something else. But they were contradicting this because the Pharisees, they already break the law by keeping the tradition. Jesus kept the law and break it at the same time by fulfilling the law. By putting to the law the right straw, the right period. 
to the Lord. Now, to finish this sermon, I'm sure you already understand what I tried to say to you. We, as Christians, are here yelling by the power of the Holy Spirit to let him war in our life, as Paul said in Romans 8, that the Spirit will enable us to experience the righteousness of the law, to teach us to go to Jesus, to die ourselves, and to be crucified with Christ, as he teaches to the Galatians in 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. And I no longer live. But the life I live in the flesh, I live for the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we are now crucified with Christ by faith. And that's why he said that we are now the righteousness of God. As he said to the people in, in Corinthians. He said in 2 Corinthians 5.21, God made him who have not seen to be seen for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Now, going back to the question that I said before, how can we surpass the righteousness of the Pharisees and the, the, the scribes, as Jesus said, in order to enter in the kingdom of heaven? By putting your faith in Jesus Christ, who is the perfect righteousness of God. If you believe Jesus, and no other person in this world or any deity in any religion as your Lord and Savior and the only one who can take you to the Father in heaven, then you have the righteousness of God. Because Jesus became a sinner because of you and me so that we, sinners, you and me, can become the righteousness of God. Praise the Lord. We are justified. We are Sanctified, and the word sanctified it means declare righteous because of our faith in Jesus. We already surpass the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes by believing in Jesus, the only sacrifice accepted by God. But what we have to do, contradicted by or inversed by the Pharisees, did that they only focus in conduct and they forgot the character. We have to keep working in our character and also in our conduct because conduct flow out of the character. Conduct flows out of the character. Bonds will say, conduct is what we do. Character is what we are. Character is the root of the tree. Conduct is the fruit of the tree. We are here to bear the fruits of repentance, the fruits of the kingdom, heaven's life. And our characters are the identity, the personality that we have, the person that we are, the person of Christ in us. That's our character. So we have to work together with the Holy Spirit every day to form this character of Christ. We are saved by, by faith, and we are saved just immediately as we pray and repent. But our conversion is the whole process of our life. You are saved, but not yet in heaven. Already, but not yet. We are saved and justified it and declared righteous. But we are not yet in heaven. So we have to keep working in our character. That is, we say, what a man does when he is taking off his guard is the best evidence for what sort of man he is. So be ready and alert that every day you have to work on building your character. Don't be lazy on building your character. And I'm preaching to myself too. Remember, this is the good news. And it comes from BBC. Yes, BBC News. Not the one from Europe. But the Building Christian Character News. <laughs> BBC. Remember the news. BBC. Build Christian Characters. 
Oh, sorry, BCC. Yeah, stupid of me. So I was sleepy when I typed this. BCC, sorry, BCC. Build Christian character. That's the good news. So we are here to build the character of Jesus as a fruit of the surpassing righteousness that we already have. Hallelujah. We already have this righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. And God wants to keep, keep this character in us so we can change this world. Know that the, the political correctness of this world changed our life. We can change the political view of this world by keeping the character of the kingdom of heaven. Why? As many says, without God, you can change. With God, we can change the world. But without God, the world can change you. What do you prefer? That the world change you or that you can change the world? How can we do that? As we keep God's promise by seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the sins that we plan that we have for the rest of this year for the next year will be added to you. That's true. That's promise. I guarantee you. I put my hands in fi on fire that God will keep his promise because he did it 20 years in my life here in Korea and he was faithful until today. So, we just need to war in our character. And we just need to war to show to the world that we are real Christians and we have a real Christianity. So let's do that in Jesus' name. Let's pray.